Accompanying the first screening were various articles in the TV Times and TV World, the independent listings magazines published in the 60s. To convey a taste of the week's plot, the TV guides drew their write-ups from ITC's own advanced literature of story outline. These, like the trailers, were of very little help to the confused viewer. For example, the write-up for Arrival, referred to in the story outlined by its original script, The Arrival, was taken word for word from ITC's literature. Vapor hisses through a keyhole. The occupant of the room passes out, and then, returning to consciousness, lurches to the window for air. But it is not the familiar London view that he knows so well. His eyes stare out at a village he has never seen before. A beautiful village, architecturally puzzling and difficult to identify. With the sea in the background, mountains stretching in the other direction, it could be anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Several feature articles are also written to accompany the launch of the series. One of the first to appear was by Anthony Davis, who, in a unique approach, proceeded to describe the bizarre press conference to his readers, rather than to try and unravel some of the higher mysteries surrounding the series. A couple of articles appeared during the run, giving away the supposedly secret location of the village, discounting the belief that it was concealed from the public until the broadcast of the last episode. A few paragraphs continued to occasionally appear for the remainder of the screening, until at long last the week came for the premiere of probably the most eagerly awaited hour of British television to be shown in 1968, Fallout. The event did not go unnoticed in the pages of the TV Times when our faithful friend Anthony Davis wrote his last contemporary article about the prisoner. It took the form of an exclusive interview with the programme's elusive star, Anthony recalls how he obtained the seemingly unobtainable. I was asked to write a piece um, um, to uh, appear in the week of the final episode, you know, summing up the um, um, success or otherwise of the series and, uh, you know, explaining what was going to happen in the last episode in, without giving the entire story away, but saying whether everything was going to be made clear. And uh, so I asked uh, the studios if I could uh, get a word with Pat and they said, oh, no, no, there wasn't any, any likelihood of that. He didn't, uh, uh, he'd said all he was going to say at the beginning about it. Uh, he, he didn't want to discuss the, his work. It was there on screen for anybody to, everybody to see and to make up their own minds about. Um, he didn't uh, want to discuss it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, um, as surprising as ever, he, he, when it was actually put to him, he said, oh, yes, yes, he, he, he'd talk. I was told he, he would ring me during the lunchtime. He take, when he took a break, he was cutting the final episode at the time. Indeed, he, he rang, um, and I was thought we were going to have a sort of pleasant uh, uh, little chat about uh, how the series had gone and all the rest of it, uh, instead of which he, he, he was doing his number six, and I, I was cast as number two, and he was giving me a very, very hard time. Uh, it was the same routine, rather, as the one when he was in the cage. Uh, I would ask a question, uh, he would come back with a question, First of all, I asked him what his feelings were, at the, uh, having gone through all this uh, series and uh, now that it was coming to the end. And he just snapped back that uh, uh, he'd, he'd done a job of work, he'd been um, um, contracted to do a certain number of episodes, he'd made them, that end of story, he'd done the job. And uh, I did uh, suggest to him that uh, nearly everybody had to have some um, problems with, with parts of it, I mean, uh, such as uh, um, the lack, perhaps, of a, a logical progression between the, the episode. Pat sort of snapped back at me, uh, well, you, you live in this world, don't you, sort of thing. You have to say yes to that, he said very helpfully. Um, do you always find the world logical? Is everything logical? Does it all progress logically? And uh, that was his answer to that. I did suggest to him that I thought some of the um, uh, medical experiments carried out on the on the prisoner were uh, perhaps verging a bit on the sick or sadistic. He threw back at me, uh, at that time Dr. Christian Barnard had just done the first um, uh, heart transplant um, and the patient had died after I think uh, about three weeks. Uh, did I find that, uh, you know, this experiment to sick? Did I find that uh, sadistic? And uh, 
we, we went on like this, and uh, you know, I, I was having to um, battle every inch of the way. And uh, when we got to the key point, would everything be made clear in the final episode? Would it answer all the questions? He, he just said, no. And I said, well, we, uh, um, we would uh, know uh, the explanation of, uh, of who had been holding him, at least, and where, where the prison was, and so on, the village was. And he said, no. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wound up with very little again. <laughs> I, I must say, though, that uh, Pat's technique, uh, as we saw at the press conference, that he teased the press unmercifully. He didn't give them any information, or didn't give them answers to their questions, uh, but he did give them a story. They all had plenty to write about. Well, it, it was uh, rather surprising because the uh, piece, while it wasn't unfriendly in any way, I mean, I admired the series, um, but uh, I did uh, suggest that, uh, you know, it, it wasn't perfect. Uh, it wasn't without some flaws, and uh, this was most unusual for TV Times, especially at that time when it was uh, its role was purely to publicise programmes, and uh, uh, nothing uh, critical was ever published at all, even even of the mildest nature. Uh, and uh, some people felt that uh, this was this was a little surprising that they published it uh, as it stood. Um, so anyway, on the morning that the uh, magazine was uh, on the streets. Um, phone near me rang, a colleague picked it up, uh, practically went white, and he, uh, he, he tossed me the phone as though it was red hot and hissed at me, Pat McGowan. And uh, so I took the phone, I said, hello, Pat. And he said, uh, I liked your piece. I just rang to tell you I, I, I liked the article. And I said, oh, that's nice. He said, uh, very good. And crash, put the phone down. And uh, that, in fact, was the last time I spoke to Pat um, about the prisoner or indeed about anything else.